Hi, and welcome to La Rosa Reads. I'm Denise La Rosa, and today I will be chatting it up about all of the books that I read in March. Let's talk books. So March was supposed to be a month of lots of reading. It turns out that I ended up reading seven books, which while that sounds pretty good and like a good track record for me to have, I thought I was going to be reading at least 10 books this month. I had two weeks off, technically one week work from home, one week vacation in the month of March. And let me just say, life happened. <laughs> there were some unexpected twists and turns to my month that prevented me from reading as much as I wanted. However, I think it was a pretty solid reading month all in all. It, was, it wasn't one of those months that I felt like this is awesome, like turning out one great book after another great book after another great book. It was just a steady, solid reading month. Not too many super highs and not too many super lows. So I'm going to go in order by sharing with you the first book that I read in the month of March and go all the way down to my final read. Also, some of you may know from previous videos that I stated that I am a judge for the BookTube Prize. I will be recording and publishing a vlog about that experience for the quarterfinals. However, um, I will be sharing with you a couple of those required reads that I had that I was judging um, since uh, reading those books. They have already gone through that judging process and the winners have been revealed. So I will share a little bit more with you than I have in the past. I'm not sharing with you all of those books. I'm just kind of spotlighting a couple of them because it's a lot of books. And I also read a lot of other books. So there you go. The first book that I read in the month of March 2022 is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. So this is one of the books that was a required read for me to judge for the BookTube Prize. It was a very surprisingly good read. I didn't have low expectations. I thought it would be okay. I would see it from time to time in Goodreads and Bookstagram. And, you know, I wasn't really sure what the book was about, but I had a feeling it was going to be a solid read. So we have the main character, Lala. She is living with her grandmother. Her mother has passed away. I'm not going to give too much by sharing all those details as to how she came to lose her life. But Lala is living um, very meagerly in Barbados. She is kind of curious about life and breaking some rules. And so the book starts off by grandma telling this tale of how the one-armed sister now has to sweep her house with one arm because she was not... Um, following and living by the rules and the expectations. She was taking risk and unnecessary risk and going through this tunnel that became infamous later in the story. So parallel with Lala's journey of just living a hard life, being married, married to such an abusive, disgusting creature by the name of Aiden. Oh my gosh, talk about a villain that you just love to hate. He was just, mm, he just, was an infuriating character. You just can't even feel sorry for him even though you get a little insight into his childhood and what has shaped him into being the horrible person he is. He's just terrible. With that being said, uh, parallel with Lala's journey is Mira Whalen, Whalen's journey. So Mira Whalen is from the islands. She is half black, half white. She is a biracial woman who goes on to marry a very wealthy white man. Their paths cross in a very violent, gruesome way. Aiden, Lala's husband, ends up murdering, and I'm not giving you a spoiler. This comes out right away. Ends up murdering Mrs. Whalen's husband. And the stories just run parallel and towards the end, their paths, there being <laughs> Lala and Mrs. Whalen, their paths cross. There's also a wonderful side character um, who was kind of like a love lost of Lala's. Um, I called him Tone. It was spelled T-O-N-E. There was no accent mark. Um, but this guy is also troubled <laughs> and he ends up being a character that you can kind of empathize with and a troubled soul that 
kind of helps guide Lala's journey along her life and along this um, terrible circumstance that shows up. So there's a lot happening. This title doesn't really tell you much about the story as far as, you know, the what actually unfolds in the story. It starts off with this tale and then you see how Lala's life just remains troubled and you just wonder, will she ever get a break? Will she ever find freedom and a good life? And you kind of get some insight at the end. Oh, this next one, you guys, Jess, mwah chef's kiss and it is before the coffee gets cold tashikazu kawaguchi wrote a masterpiece in writing before the coffee gets cold so we have this infamous coffee shop in japan and it has the ability to take its um patrons back in time there are a lot of rules however as far as how you are able to do this how you're able to go back in time so for example you have to sit in a very specific chair in the cafe and there happens to also be a ghost that sits there and she only gets up once every 24 hours so you have that challenge also you can journey back into the past but that journey back into the past will not change the present next you have to visit someone who has visited the cafe in real life. So you can't visit this cafe and say, I'd like to journey back in time and have a conversation with my mother if your mom had never visited the cafe in prior times. So there's more to that. There's a lot of barriers. And so you would think like, oh my gosh, that's, there's a lot of rules here. Like what's the point of journeying back in time? However, this collection of short stories really delivers in being introspective and reflective and moving and touching the characters it's interesting because they're not as fully developed as you would hope maybe however you are really drawn to their stories and and their journey in going back in time and living in the present and wondering about what their future holds for them it's so profound and there's a lot of life lessons within this book i thoroughly enjoyed every single short story i thoroughly enjoyed each character's path their life path their journey back into the past it was delightful absolutely delightful um and i say that but it was an emotional read so i don't want to say that it was delightful as far as saying that it was a light read it was a moving, emotional read, but it's one that I think I walked away from feeling like more whole and more in tuned with what matters in life. It gave me a neat perspective, an important perspective on life. So Amanda Gorman became famous by being the inaugural poet and she really captivated the world and was able to capture a moment in time where we were living history and we're really at a turning point and having to make a decision on how we were to move forward as American citizens. Were we going to move forward united or were we going to move forward in this continuous state of polarization? And so Amanda Gorman has written a collection of poems that is known as Call Us What We Carry. This collection of poetry is about the pandemic and i kind of didn't realize that i just knew that i loved amanda gorman's talents as a poet and knew that whatever she wrote i would want to read and some people might think is it too soon to read about the pandemic and reflect on the pandemic and i think this was perfect timing for me in reading this collection of poetry we are i don't want to say we're nearing the end because we seem to never know when the end is coming However, we're at this place where for me personally, it's like, okay, we're over two years from the start of this pandemic. I've had COVID, I've gotten COVID, um, the mask mandates are loosening up. And so it does give you a sense that we're moving forward and that this is more and more in our rear view mirror. It was the perfect time for me personally to read this collection of poetry, to reflect upon, you know, what the heck just happened the past two years. And she so eloquently and accurately 
writes about these experiences, I immediately went back into the moments of being in quarantine. I like how soon we forget, right? Like what that felt like. And she just has this way of articulating these lived experiences that resonate with you. It's like universal interpretation of what was going on, as well as a healing bomb. I I would describe this collection of poetry as a healing bomb for us, that it helped me to process my emotions and what I was experiencing both internally and externally during that time. And wow, I was really pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this collection of poetry. I finally did it, you guys. I finally read The Personal Librarian, which was co-written, is co-written, by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. The Personal Librarian definitely exceeded my expectations. I am a lover of historical fiction. It is my go-to genre. I had a feeling that this was going to be a solid read. It was going to be a great read, but it was an exceptional read. Belle de Costa Green was the personal librarian to J.P. Morgan, and little did he know, and little did the world know, she was a black woman. She was a black librarian who was passing as a white woman. Her father was famously known for being involved in the civil rights, um, working with Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois. He is right up there. And so for his wife to say, look, we have the opportunity to pass as white. We have the physical features and life for black folks in America is only going to get worse from here. I want to give my children a better life. So I want us to pass as white. Can you imagine being a civil rights leader and trying to pass as white at the same time? This was going to be detrimental to his career and he chose his career over his family, which separated him from his wife and his children, including Belle da Costa Green. So Belle and her siblings went on this path of passing as white and living this lie, essentially. Um, they went on this journey with their mother and it actually led to her having an opportunity to be the personal librarian to J.P. Morgan. And she lives a fascinating life. She had a really intriguing way of navigating the world while also carrying the weight of knowing she was living a lie, that she was a black woman. And while she was making progress for us, nobody knew that she was making progress for us as black people. So, so good. There was some romance involved. Um, so that was kind of, you know, good and delicious to read about. And just so much about this story just touched my heart and moved me. It was thoroughly entertaining. And it just made you want to learn more about Belle da Costa Green. After I closed this book, I just started researching myself to learn more about her. What an incredible, intriguing figure Belle da Costa Green is. Wow. So I already talked about this book with my daughters, Gianna and Natalie, and it is Girl on Fire, written by Alicia Keys and co-written by Andrew Weiner. So Alicia Keys and Andrew Weiner did a really good job of rolling out this story that is a coming of age and coming to terms and coming to grips with um, the main character's identity, standing in her truth. Our main character is Lolo Wright, and she is realizing that she has special powers. And I think, you know, it's interesting because you can really interpret this book as those special powers being in all of us, not superpowers, but special powers, things that make us unique, and how we can carry these gifts and really not honor those gifts, not honor and celebrate ourselves enough. And then once we get to a place where we can stand in our truth and stand tall and strong and be confident, we are able to tap into those powers and do good for the people around us using those gifts. And so that's basically the gist of this story that we have here. My daughters and I talked about this. So if you haven't seen that video already, we'll be sure to put it up in the cards for you. It was um, quite uh, violent 
and there were some cuss words. So I know that there are Alicia Keys fans of all ages. However, this was in the young adult section. I don't recommend that you have people, young people in your life younger than that, reading this book. With that being said, it was a very typical superpower, all is crazy for a while and it all ends well, kind of vibe-ish kind of story. And um, very typical and good. We gave it three and a half stars. And I think Alicia Keys just gave us another gem. <sighs> and we have Pony, written by R.J. Palacio. This book, you guys, was absolutely amazing. I would have never picked it up. It's a cover that definitely would not have grabbed me, um, not on social media, not in the bookstore. However, March was middle grade March season. And thanks to Books and Jams and The Curly Reader for putting that on my radar. I follow them on social media and also on booktube. And when I heard about middle grade March, I was like, this is like gonna be my thing. I love reading middle grades books. And this was the featured book of the month. There was a book discussion at the end of the month over on Books and Jams on Krista's channel. We have a wonderful story about a young boy named Silas. This book gives me Western vibes, you guys, and as a West Virginian, I loved it. I grew up watching Westerns, and so Silas is a young boy around the age of 12 who grew up without his mother. She died um, while giving birth to Silas. He grew up with a wonderful, loving, endearing father by the name of Martin Bird. One fateful night, um, a rowdy crew comes to Silas and Martin's house, and take Martin, Silas's father, away from him. And Silas goes on the hunt in the woods searching for his father. There's more to that story, of course, but I don't want to spill all the tea because I want every single one of you to grab this book, even if you're not a typical middle grade reader. So this journey that Silas has is done with this book pony by the name of pony that was with the crew but mysteriously came back and silas took it as a sign that he should get on this pony and travel through the woods to find his father he also he being silas has the ability to see ghosts he has a ghost friend by the name of mitten wool so essentially silas is not traveling alone in the woods he has pony and mitten wool with him and he runs into another um, individual that travels with him in search for his father and from there the story just has so many layers and it is so beautifully written this is perhaps some of the most beautiful writing I have read and experienced in a long long time I mean I was I'm not typically a crier with books, <laughs> uh, but I was shedding some tears like throughout the book. And it wasn't like a downer. It was just so moving. And the way um, RJ Palacio writes and captures these moments and the characters are so endearing and you're just so immersed in the story. It is an exceptional reading experience. Please, please, please pick up this book. It was amazing. And finally, I listened to the audiobook of Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This book was totally not my typical type of book to read. I don't usually read science-y books. Um, it's just really not my vibe, not my thing, but good for you if it's your thing and your vibe. And so we're talking about in this book, we're dealing with this lone astronaut who wakes up and is like, where the heck am I? What's going on? And he has to do some research to first of all, figure out who is he, where is he, and why is he there? So essentially we find out that he's on a mission that can save or destroy Earth as we know it. And from there, it is just one interesting 
experience after another. I don't really quite know how to explain this book. It's one of those books that you just have to read and experience it for yourself. It's so um, wittingly written and quirky and fun and each chapter is a cliffhanger so you find yourself listening for me I was listening to it on the audiobook and it would end a chapter and I'm like well I can't just stop there I have to listen to the next chapter so it was thoroughly entertaining I really enjoyed it do I think I'm going to continue to read this type of genre of book probably not but Project Hail Mary is really a winner in my mind <sighs> So that is it, my friends. That was my reading experience in March. So thank you for joining me for this wrap up. Be sure to stick around. We have lots of videos. If you want to know what my plans are for April, as far as my reading journey is concerned, you can check out this video right here. And until next time, let's keep on reading, friends. Take care and be well. Bye.